Hi everyone. In this video session, we will discuss the Earth Tester objective. At the end of this video, you will be able to measure the Earth resistance using an Earth Tester. What is Earth resistance? Earth resistance is the resistance value measured between infinite Earth and the Earth electrode. Why should Earth resistance be measured? Whenever a fault or leakage current occurs in an electrical system, it is taken to ground for the protection of humans and other equipment. To make the fault current flow easily to the ground, the resistance of the earth should be maintained at a minimum and it has to be frequently checked that the earth resistance is maintained low. If the earth resistance is above the specified limit, the leakage current or fault current will find it difficult to flow to the earth where it will cause electrical hazards to humans and equipments. Earthing protects the person working with the electrical device from leakage current flowing through their body. By maintaining all the equipment of the power system at earth potential, unexpected electrical charges due to lightning or static electricity are dissipated to the earth through earthing, thus protecting the system. Hence, it is important to know the resistance of the earth before earthing any electrical device. The determination of earth resistance can be done with the help of an earth tester. If the earth's resistance is not within the specified limit, necessary steps should be taken to bring the resistance down. What must be the value of earth resistance? The ideal earth resistance is thought to be zero allowing a fault current to flow quickly into the ground. However, this is impossible. Various places have different earth resistance values. According to Indian standards, earthing value provides a tolerable resistance value for various constructions and is mostly dependent on soil resistivity. It will cost a lot of money and require an efficient earthing system in order to achieve such a low value for earthing resistance. Therefore, for practical purposes, a nominal value of 1 ohm is chosen. Earth resistance should be maintained between 0 and 5 ohms and up to 10 ohms can be acceptable. More than 10 ohms is not good and immediate steps should be taken to reduce it to normal values. How is Earth resistance measured? There are different methods to measure the Earth's resistance, but the most common and direct method of measuring Earth's resistance is by using an equipment called Earth Tester. The Earth Tester measures Earth's resistance using Ohm's law principle R is equal to V upon I. Earth Tester is a combination of direct reading ohm meter. and a small hand-driven generator which supplies the testing voltage of 500 volts. It has provision to connect to the earth with electrodes. When the DC generator in the earth tester is driven with the help of the handle, it will produce the electromotive force or voltage which will cause the current to flow to the earth through the earth rod. The amount of voltage is divided by the current value as per Ohm's laws. R is equal to V upon I. The calculated resistance value was displayed in the earth tester. Nowadays, instead of a hand-operated DC generator, battery is used. By just pressing a button, you can measure the earth's resistance. There are three types of methods for measuring earth resistance. 1. 4-point method 2. 3-point method 3. 2-point method Let us discuss the 4-point method. This method requires the use of an earth tester with four terminals P1, P2, C1 and C2. P1 and P2 denotes a pressure or voltage coil and C1, C2 denotes a current coil for measuring current. Along with the earth tester, three iron rod also required. 
The Earth's length could be 2 feet with a diameter of 12 mm, 10 meters of PVC insulated copper wires, hammer and measuring tape. Isolate the earthing electrode from the electrical system in which resistance has to be measured. Drive each electrode 6 to 12 inches into the soil at the same depth and equal distances from each other. The distance between earth electrodes should be at least 20 times greater than the depth of the electrodes in the ground. For example, if the depth of each earth electrode is 1 foot, then the distance between electrodes is greater than 20 feet. Mark the current terminals of the earth resistant tester as C1 and C2 and the potential centers as P1 and P2. All the four wires should have the same length of 5 meters each. Remove the insulation at the ends of the wires for 1 inch and connect all the four wires between the four terminals C1, C2, P1, P2 in the same tester and the four earth rods in the sequence C1, P1, P2, C2. Usually, terminal C1 that is connected to the earthing electrode whose resistance has to be measured. Press start on the earth resistant tester to test the resistance. Record at least six values of resistance and take the average as the exact value of the resistance measured. Let us discuss the three-point method of earth resistance. The three-point method is also called the fall potential method. The three-point method or fall potential method is the most common way to measure earth resistance. But it requires special procedures when used to measure large electrode systems. To measure the earth resistance using this method, requires an earth tester with four terminals, C1, C2, P1 and P2, three insulated copper PVC wires, a hammer, three electrodes and measuring tape. Isolate the earthing electrode from the electrical system in which resistance has to be measured. Make a shot between the terminals P1 and C1 with a jumper wire on the earth tester. Connect the earthing electrodes that need to be measured to the current terminal C1. Connect the other two rods with P2 and C2 terminals using insulated wires. Now the C2 reference rod is driven into the earth straight out as far from the electrode C1 under test as possible. Potential reference P2 is then driven into the earth at a set number of points roughly on a straight line between C1 and C2. Using a measuring tape to determine the distance between points C1 and C2. Place the potential electrode P2 61.8% of the distance from the Earth's current electrode C1. If the distance between the terminals C1 and C2 is 10 feet, then fix the distance as 6 feet and 1 inch between the terminal P2 and C2 terminals. Press start and read out the resistance value. This is the actual value of the ground electrode under test. Move the potential electrode P2 10 feet farther away from the electrode C1 and make a second measurement. Move the potential electrode P2 10 feet closer to the electrode C1 and make a third measurement. The average of the three measurements can be used to calculate the electrode resistance. Let us discuss the two-point method. The two-point method is also called the dead earth method. The two-point method is most effective for quick testing. This method is applicable in areas where the ground rod or electrode drive may not be possible. For this method, the same four terminals C1, C2, P1, P2 earth tester is taken. In this method, the P1 and C1 terminals together are connected to the earth electrode tester, while P2 and C2 terminals together are connected to the different metallic grounded point, like a water pipe or building steel. 
press start and read out the value resistance from the earth tester. To get an accurate reading, the earth electrode must be placed far enough from the second grounding point to be outside of its field of influence. The three point method is more accurate than the dead earth method, which is the simplest way to get a reading on ground resistance. What are steps to be taken to reduce earth resistance? Increase the earthing rod diameter. Use multiple rods instead of single earthing rods. Treat the soil to reduce its resistivity by adding chemical compounds. By pouring water at the earthing point, especially during the summer season. By pouring salt and charcoal at the ratio of 1 is to 5. Soldering or welding the nuts and bolts. I hope after watching this video, you can measure the earth's resistance using an earth tester. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.